to the entire world. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. God is good all the time. Y'all, I am truly blessed to have my mother here with me. And she sends me a text every day. Mm. Yes, she does. And I want to share the text message she sends to me. It's a different message every day. But I want to share the latest message that she sent to me. All right, y'all. But before I do, I want to say thank you to all the mothers all across this planet. I, as a parent, I, as a father, have never had to endure that physical pain that you endure as that mother. I have not had to do that. My wife has done that. And I can't thank her enough. I can't thank my own mother enough. I can't thank my sister enough for the burden, for the caring of that seed, that child. I can't thank you enough for being there, not just for your own flesh of flesh, blood of blood, but you have been there for other children, other adults who see you as a mother figure. I am a chef for a living, and I specialize in cooking for the senior culture a.k.a. senior citizens. I've worked at restaurants, hotels, all that jazz, but it's nothing like caring for the community because these are the people who cared for me, and some of them cared for you, whether they were a mother and a teacher, a mother and a coach, a mother and a civil servant, a mother and and a waiter or waitress, a mother and a bartender, a mother in whatever they do, I want to say thank you because that's a lot of hard work. That is a big commitment, and it takes nothing away from me as a father. But I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that women, not just mothers, but women, the name Eve, let's take the name Eve. The name Eve means life. And I believe that women are the bringers of that life. And I want to say thank you. But let me let me get to the text message that my mother sent me the other day, y'all. The message reads, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm. Now that's the message my mother sent to me the other day, y'all. Now that is prolific. That's potent. That my mother would send a message like this to let me know. Again, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Mm. So that has me to contemplate. That makes me think. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mom. Because you keep me thinking. You keep me on my toes. Spiritually, you do. So let's run this down. For I am persuaded. For I am convinced. 
I, I know I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So that means no matter what we go through, no matter what we perceive to be impossible, we must know that there is nothing that can tear us away from what God has for us. The love of God, no matter what we go through, the love of God is there for us at all times. Now, let's go a little bit further. Let's, let's go in Romans chapter 8, 38, and 39. So let's start it off backwards. Okay. This is in Jesus Christ, our Lord, the love of God. Now. Let's talk about the love of God. Now, the love of God, we see that we should go through death, life. We should experience angels and principalities and powers, things present and things to come, height and depth, and creatures. So, God is going to send us through a tumultuous situation. God will send us through the ringer, so to speak. God will send us through the washing machine, so to speak. God will send us through the thickets, the thistles, the thorns, and the pricks to make us understand how much he loves us. Now, it says the love of God. We must understand that God is manifold. That's the catch. God has many forms of love. God has tough love, comforting love, warm love, cold love, hard love, soft love, kind love, angered love, and many, many more different types of love God has for us. Are we willing to go through these things in a persuaded mind frame? Because we will go through them, y'all. We're going to go through the test of time. We are going to go through the battles, the ups and the downs, the ebbs and the flows, the turns, the hooks, the slights, the mischievous, deceivious ways of many people. But are we focused, are we persuaded that even if we go through these things, because God said we shall go through them, we should go through the depths of it. We should go through the depths of friendships, relationships, jobs, situations, trauma, circumstances. We should go through the life of joy, pain, burden, angst, depression. We shall go through the depths of stress, the depths of joy, the depths of happiness. We shall go through all sorts of principalities and things that we stand on and believe and then get swiftly knocked off of once we realize God was not in that. That was just something we thought. We will go through all sorts of things, whether it is a person or a creature, trying to stop you from getting to where God needs you to be. Are you willing to go through those things? Are you willing to be persuaded that God is there for you? And that Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, our personal Lord and Savior. Now, if Jesus Christ is not your personal Lord and Savior. What do you do? How do you think? How do you feel? Jesus is a source to God. Jesus is a source to the love of God, to God as a whole. There are many different cultures. 
So that's why I bring that up. There are many different religious practices. So if you don't believe in Jesus for whatever reason, and you believe in God, you do believe in Jesus. Because God is Jesus in the image and in the likeness, in the flesh. That's who Jesus is. You were made in the image and in the likeness of God. You were made in the image and the likeness of them. Let us make them in our image, which is God. Jesus and that Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinitarian, is the image of us that we were made in. So if we hold fast and understand that we will have to go through the storm, we will have to go through our individualized storm. There are many people who will tell you, oh, I, I know what you're going through. I'm not going to tell you I know what you're going through because I'm not a psychic. But I will tell you, I understand your pain because I know what pain is myself. I don't underestimate your pain. I don't doubt your pain. I take it serious. And therefore, because my mama gave me these words to speak, I'm going to speak on it. You think about it. For I am persuaded. How many times has somebody tried to get you to think on something? Try to convince you to go a certain way. And you didn't. Because your mind was made up. Your mind was stayed on what your mind was stayed on. They could not sway you left or right. You are a pillar. Of what the Lord has. That is why you stayed. And you saw the results of you staying. When you stayed, you went through the ups, the downs. The ebbs, the flows. The hatred of other individuals. Computers freezing up, not working. So you can't get your assignment in on time. All sorts of things. All sorts of principalities. But guess what? Because you stayed and didn't transfer. You got the grade. You got the position. Because you stayed and didn't leave that job, you got the raise and the unexpected bonuses. Because you stayed, you got what you deserve and what you desire because you went through the heartache, the hardships, the burdens. Now, isn't that something? There are many, many examples in the Bible that tells us we will go through the pain. We will go through the burden. Yes, we will. But if we are persuaded and have our mind locked in on what God has for us in the name of Jesus Christ, because notice it says, which is in Christ, Jesus, our Lord. Now, if this is in Christ, Jesus, our Lord, that means it has to come out of Christ, Jesus, our Lord. And how does it come out of Christ, Jesus, our Lord? Through the word. Because remember, Jesus said, I Speak the word of the one who sent me, which is God, the father, the uncreated, the nameless one. This is who Jesus Christ operated for. So we must understand at the end of it all, Jesus wants us to understand God. God's very first question before Jesus made his initial named physical corporeal appearance in the Bible. God asked Adam, where art thou? That was the very first question God asked humanity. Now, why did I say that before Jesus made his first corporeal appearance in the Bible? Because Jesus is all throughout the Old Testament and we can touch on that on another time. But Jesus is all through the Old Testament. We have to understand that. So this is what I take. From Romans. Chapter 8. 
38 and 39. We are going to go through struggles. We won't always see eye to eye with what God has put in front of us. Because understand, understand and truly believe there is nothing that will come across you that has not been checked by God. So if we act in accordance and keep our mind persuaded ooh, on what God has for us, then it matters not what God has sat in front of us. Let's be honest and think on it. If we have our mind locked on what God has for us, it matters not what God has sat in front of us because we know God has sat it in front of us and we have our eyes locked on what God has for us. So if God has set a distraction in front of us, what do we do? We are not dissuaded by this. We are still persuaded by what God has for us. So we will go through that distraction. We will eradicate that distraction and go through the depths, go through the principalities, go through the turmoil, go through the life, go through the death, go through the heights, go through the creatures, go through the corruptibility, the incorruptibility to see the ever glorious love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That is what God has for us. It's for us to go through it. We love to say, oh man, the devil's testing me. The de now, let me tell you something. Now listen and hear me well. The devil is dead. Spell the name devil backwards. I want you to really spell the name devil backwards. What does it spell? It spells lived. Yeah, lived. Mm-hmm. Who do you serve? You serve the living God. Now, what does that tell you about God? Don't God have a sense of humor? Isn't God filled with stratagem? Mm, yes, God is filled with stratagem. And we play out the strategy mm -hmm. in God's stratosphere, on God's strata. Now, isn't that something? Think about everything I just said. That's something. We are on God's strata, and God is where? Everywhere. Nowhere. Because he's now here. And the devil is what? Dead. Dead. Remember, Jesus said, I alone have the keys. To where? Heaven and hell. And earth. Jesus has it all. So if we understand and we keep our faith and we know that everything that is sat in front of us, it is ordained by God. God put that there. Oh, all that temptation. Jesus was tempted, y'all. Jesus was tempted. So what makes us think we when I get tempted when Jesus was tempted and Jesus showed us how to pass that test? Jesus showed us how to pass that test. Jesus showed us how to do it. So if we believe and we are persuaded on what God has for us, that dream, that job, the car, the house, whatever it may be, because people say, oh, you asked for material stuff. Let me tell you something. God made all material. All material. There is nothing man-made. Because man must use God's product to make it. God made everything. Everything. The cars we drive, God made them. How did God make the cars we drive? Because man had to gather God's material. So if you didn't make the material yourself, you didn't make it. You may have put it together. Man put it together. Man assembled it. That's what man did. Man diagrammed it. But God gave us the material. That's what we have to understand. God gave us all of this. 
So if we continue to lean on the understanding of God, if we wake up and renew our mind like Jesus Christ the Nazareth has asked us to do, then we will be okay, y'all. Stay faithful, stay prayed up, stay vigilant, and know God is with you all the time. This is what it's all about, y'all. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and verse 39, y'all. I'm so serious. I am not a person that is a big on religion. I don't practice a religion, y'all. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I'm not an ordained minister. I have not been to any religious schools of study. No, every single word I speak has been ordained by God. I will only speak what God has asked me to speak. And that's the catch. You don't have to be a pastor. I'm not a pastor. But when God puts something on you, when God puts something in you, and God takes it and goes without of you with it into the world, you must use it because we are one race. God's race, the human race, right there. That is who we are. Y'all know we don't have to ask our hearts to beat, our eyes to blink our lungs to inhale, nor exhale. Let us not get caught up in all the sensational trash they have out there in society for us, y'all. No. Let us not be wrapped up into that. They want us to see a duality in this world when it, it's truly the three. It's not one and two. It's not just left and right. There is the middle. There is the middle. There is gray. It's not just black and white. There is the middle. That is what God is. Everything. Father. Son. Mother. Father. Savior. Holy Spirit, we must understand that that Trinitarian is everything. Everything, y'all. And the devil is dead. We are alive. We are living. We are the living chosen generation right here on this earth. And y'all know I'm not playing. Why am I saying it? Again, y'all, we have never had to see Jesus Christ in the flesh to believe and to hold fast that Jesus Christ is the savior of humanity, is the savior of this free world, y'all. We didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do that. We didn't have to see Jesus for this to come to pass, y'all. For us to be the most prolific generation to ever grace this planet Earth. That's the catch. Are people willing to see this? Are people willing to notice this? I must ask that, y'all. As I'm flipping through here, and I'm looking because I need y'all to understand something. Because this is so serious. All right, y'all. I'm going to read to you. John. Chapter 14. Starting at. Verse 11. Believe me. That I am in. The father. And the father in me. Or else believe me. For the very works sake verse 12 verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also 
and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now let's go further. Verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Mm. Let's go a little bit further. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him not, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Mm. We're going to stop right there. Well, let's go further. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Oof. Now, John chapter 14, verse 11. Mm, believe me that I am in the Father. So Jesus is in the Father, was in the Father. And the Father is in Jesus. Hmm? So we have to understand that. Now, if we can't even understand that, Jesus is saying, just believe in the works. Believe in the works that I have done, the stuff you've seen me perform, the things you've seen the Father perform, the stories you've heard about Noah, the works of Moses. The book of Acts is filled with the acts of the Holy Spirit. At least go off of that is what Jesus is saying. Mm. Now, see, he's speaking to a different breed of person here. Verily, verily. Verily, verily. That means, listen, you need to hear what I have to say. I say unto you, he that believeth on me. This is how you know he's speaking to him. The ones who have ears and are blind physically so they can see spiritually. They know not limitation. They know not bounds. Verily, verily, I say unto you, those that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Shall he, she do also. And greater works than these shall he do, shall she do, because I go unto the Father. Do you believe that you can do greater works than what Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, has done? Do you believe you can do equal works to what Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, has done? I believe I can do greater works than what Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, has done. I believe I can do equal works to what Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, has done. Why am I saying this? Because Jesus said it. And I believe. Not just on Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I know Jesus. Don't you? Don't you know Jesus? Or do you just believe Jesus? Do you just believe in Jesus? Believe on Jesus? Do you believe in God? Or do you know God? To believe something and to know something are two different things. And Jesus is just asking us to believe. But just think if you knew Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Has Jesus spoken to you? Has God come to you and spoken to you? And were you paying attention? Did you notice it was God? How could you not? 
How could you not? How could you not know that was Jesus speaking to you? Oh, it's so easy to not recognize the call of God, the call of Jesus. But those that do know they shall go about and do greater works than what Jesus has done. Equal works than what Jesus has done. Why? Because if you ask in the name of Jesus, it shall be granted. He will make sure the Father gets it to you. Jesus will make sure it gets done. Jesus will make sure it gets done. This is what Jesus is telling us. This is what Jesus is saying. Mm. Because Jesus is gone to be with the Father. He is gone. He's out. He's out. He's going to be with the Father. He's going to rest while in motion. Think on that. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So when you ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, by way of the grace, the mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit, woo that's the Holy Trinitarian, that God may receive the glory, you will get it done. Hallelujah, don't you understand as I'm looking you in your spirit? You actually are looking me in my spirit. This camera means nothing. I know you sense that energy from God that has nothing to do with me. Don't you understand that if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Ask in the name of God. Ask in the name of Jesus. Ask in the name of the Holy Spirit. Ask and it shall be done. It shall be given to you. Hmm? Oh, yeah, because if ye love me, you'll keep my commandments. And that's part of the commandments of Jesus, not the Ten Commandments, Jesus' commandments, the commandments that Jesus has left us. Do you know the commandments Jesus left you? That's the catch. Study, research, study. I will come back with that for you, too. So you can understand the commandments that Jesus has left you. Be fruitful and multiply. Consider that as one of the commandments that Jesus left you. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. That she may abide with you forever. Now, who is the comforter? Who is that comforter? That is the Holy Spirit. That is that virgin spirit. That is who that is. That is Sophia. The virgin spirit. That is Barbelo. That is all of them mixed up into one. Do you know these names? Mm. These names are important. I will go through those names. And I have gone through those names. But you must find God and study. You must. Because no one can ever cover the expansive territory of God completely. Yeah. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So think on these things. In order to do greater works than what Jesus has done. How can one go about and do greater works than what Jesus has done? We'll cover that on the next go around. Romans 8, 3, 8. Romans 8, 3, 9. You will be dissuaded sometimes. But if you are persuaded, for I am persuaded, and if you stay persuaded, you will wade through the water. You will. Yes, you will. Because you have your mind. Stay on Jesus. Ooh, woke up this morning with my mind. Well, stay on Jesus. Yes, that's what it's all about, baby. Wake up with your mind. Stay on Jesus, son, daughter, mother, father, grandmother, grandpa, auntie, uncle, cousin, third cousin, nephew, niece. Everybody, keep your mind stayed on Jesus. 
Renew your mind and be not conformed to this world, y'all. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. And remember, plan strategically for your life. Our life will strategically plan for you. Let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth by way of the grace, mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit, Father. Thanking you, God, giving you recognition that your name be lifted up, that glory be drawn upon you, Father. Bless us, Father, so that we may have the confidence, Father, and be persuaded that we can and we shall go about and do equal and greater works than what Jesus Christ the Nazareth has done. Father, we don't speak these words in vain. I'm not speaking them in vain. Jesus spoke these words, God, and I lean on the understanding of you, God, because that's what Jesus is, Father. I am in Jesus, on Jesus, around Jesus. The Holy Spirit is in me, on me, and I am in it. It, it is on and all around all of us in this world, Father. We ask that you continue to guide us, comfort us, and love us. And please, Father, be kind to us, God. Give us the blessings, Father, that we know not even to ask for. Give us the grace and the mercy, Father, that we shall never deserve, Father. Continue to shower, Father, and open up those windows, Father, of heaven, and pour those blessings out accordingly to you and your will and your method, Father, and allow us to have the patience and understanding that we will never understand your methodology at all, Father. For these and many other blessings that we will continuously pray in the word and blood of your darling son, Jesus Christ the Nazareth, by way of the grace, mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit, Father, we recognize you here and now, God, uncreated spirit. Hallelujah. We pronounce and claim your name victorious. Amen, God. Be blessed and stay phenomenal, y'all. I'll get back with y'all, and we'll talk about John chapter 14. Are you willing to do greater works than what Jesus has done? Somebody has to do it, y'all. I'm willing to step up. Are you willing to step up with me, though? That's the catch. God servant out.